<laughs> so in 20 minutes, I want to cover who, what, why, where, when, and any other um, suitable words that you want to cover. Um, so we'll start with some humor. IPX, it really is coming. It's coming soon. This time, it really is different. So what is the problem we're trying to solve? I, I think mobile operators, you know, many of us in the room are probably more from a, a carrier background, but mobile operators have multiple um, needs. We often just think about the international voice need, but they have roaming needs. Uh, first of all, help to set up roaming contracts in the first place, access to a global C7 signaling network, um, that allows them to authenticate when someone turns their phone on in a distant country. Are they able to make voice calls? Are they able to access the internet and so on? They need access to a PSDN network or a, a telephone network that allows that roaming customer to be reached and also to make um, calls. They need the ability to collect the CDRs and manage it and look at fraud problems and all the rest of it. So just on the roaming voice piece, there's a, a whole collection of um, different service providers that are involved in making that work. Then you move across to someone wants to um, access the internet when they're roaming. So you need a way of, of transporting those packets back to the home network to access the public internet because that's the way roaming data works. And so the a whole GRX network structure has been set up, a separate IP network that carries these browsing packets from the roaming network back to the home network. So you've got all of that piece um, that's in place. Then they need the ability to deliver SMS messages globally. So an SMS runs over, again, the, a C7 signaling network. So they need access to, again, this global C7 network. They need SMS hub providers that uh, deliver these messages out to um, the, the distant um, service provider and customer. And similarly, when someone's roaming, that needs to work um, you know, in a roaming environment as well. Then we've got our voice uh, you know, solutions. And over the years, the international voice environment has grown to be extremely complex. Um, a, a voice minute is touched potentially many times on its way from the originating customer to the terminating customer through many interconnects, many contracts, many choices. Quality sometimes can be not just as good as we would like. So you've got that all sitting there as well, helping to solve this collection of needs from the mobile operators. So on top of all of that that's sort of been set up over the last 20, 30, 40, 100 years maybe, um, there's a whole lot of technology changes that are going on in the mobile world. The biggest one is migrating the radio environment, the, the way that a mobile phone talks to the network, to this LTE structure. An LTE is a very um, fast, efficient radio mechanism, but is designed purely to support an IP transport stream. All of the previous radio environments had an ability to handle circuit switch voice. LTE is the first one that purely supports an IP um, environment. So voice being carried over the LTE radio channels must be IP. In the short term, there are ways to fall back to the old radio bits, but going forward, voice over LTE must be an IP structure. HD voice, which is, is seen as increasingly important to um, improve the, the perceived quality and compete against the over-the-top players, that needs a transparent IP connection from end to end. It can't be transcoded along the way or converted to TDM through some carrier. All of their signaling and messaging is moving from the C7 sort of base mechanisms across to different IP protocols, so they've got to manage that. Then when people get very used to this very fast, um, ubiquitous data service at home, they travel somewhere else, they want it to work in that environment. And so the whole roaming structure needs to be updated to carry uh, that LTE IP based uh, structure as well. And in their minds, quality and managing and delivering a consistent quality is potentially one of the few differentiators that they have over the, um, over the top players that are simply running in a public IP environment. So they've got all of those sort of things coming along as well. 
And when we asked our mobile operators earlier this year in a survey what they need from the international environment, the, the, I actually, I'll talk about the second one first. The very top one that people said was LTE roaming. They needed support and assistance to make LTE roaming work. Then they said it was very important to support HD voice. And as you, you know, go down, there's uh, guaranteed quality of service to streaming video providers was, I think, number four on the list, which is indicative of the way they're starting to think about how these networks can be used um, going forward. Fortunately, BlackBerry ac Access is down at the bottom, which is not good for that company. Um, so what is the answer? Well, the answer in the GSMA's mind, the mobile uh, company's mind, is a private IP network, and that's what this sort of cloud is here, with service support um, added on top of it. And so the private IP network provides the underlying transport structure. Then you could have a voice trans uh, transit service, diameter signaling, which is the IP-based signaling that um, the mobile operators will use, LTE data roaming service carrying the uh, roaming traffic, or sorry, the data traffic back to the home network, content delivery services as, as we move forward. So you've got that basic structure of a, a private managed, quality managed um, IP network with different services running on top of it and delivering in effect massive simplification. If you think back to that picture I showed earlier about the, um, the international voice environment with the hundreds, thousands of carriers interconnected the picture in the, in the future in an IPX environment is much more one of two um, IPX providers in series connecting every service provider to every other service provider. That's the, the vision that people are moving forward to. And if you extend that one step further and say, well, the mobile operators are rolling out their own uh, IP-based networks that are, that are private and secure, you've got an IPX operator connecting that, in effect, what we will have created, if we obviously go forward down this track, is a, is a private, quality-managed, secure network from handset to handset. So all the way from the smartphone to four or five million other smartphones, billion smartphones around the world, is this private, quality-managed um, IP network. And I think what that will then generate, and I wish I could think of some of these new services and invest in them, is new high-value content, high-value services. You know, maybe the banks get involved, maybe mobile money gets much more um, involved because it is private and separate from the public internet. Um, and I think keeping that sort of vision in mind rather than, oh, we've got something that works now, we simply need to replace it by an IP version, is, you know, gives much more of the flavor of, of what this could potentially come. But what is an IPX really? There are many people struggle and many people market different views of what an IPX is. In my view, and you know, looking at all the different things that an IPX could be, I think these are the, the key things that it must have. I think it must have a dedicated IP network with multiple access pops for customers to connect to needs to be secure and separate from the public internet, from service provider to service provider. It needs a guaranteed quality and using classes of service and so on for different service requirements. SLAs, perhaps, to me, an SLA is just a way of delivering the one above it, the guaranteed quality. It needs direct routing of services from originating to terminating service providers probably taking portability into account as we move forward because you're trying to reach the right service provider, not the one that's um, got the, the number range assigned to them. And obviously it needs at least one service layer. You know, without a service layer, it's, it's not much. Um, so those, in my view, is if you were, had a checkbox of, is this an, a proper IPX? That's, that's what I think the checklist would include. On top of that, you can then add other things. You can add multiple services on the same access circuit. You can add cascading billing, maybe transparent uh, cascading billing, if you like, peering with other IPXs at the different service layers to extend the reach, SLAs with penalties, break-in, break-out of services, 
and then advanced and innovative services sitting on the top, whether it's content delivered on this quality managed network directly to the handset, financial things, you know, whatever, um, will come along in that area. And so when we ask customers, well, okay, how, you know, when you are faced with IPX operators coming to sell you something, how do you choose between them? What, what would um, determine which IPX provider you use? The first one that always came up was a provider with global reach. They're, they're, uh, the customers are thinking about, I want to reach everyone. So, so I want to um, you know, connect to someone with global reach. Lo access to a local pop came next because people are not that keen on um, establishing international circuits to uh, distant cities. I th and I think um, looking at other questions we asked, people are obviously also thinking about consolidation. I don't think anyone would simply connect to one IPX provider because you've lost your commercial negotiation and resilience questions and so on. But by the time you get to three or four, especially if they've got you know, pretty extensive global reach, you've reached the limit of what you're getting from the next one. So you know, two, three, four um, connections pretty much does it for the uh, vast majority of customers, which is you know, one of the potential drivers for consolidation in the industry. I think the last question is, is an interesting one. We asked, have, is it important to you that you've used the provider service before? <coughs> And almost no one thought that was important. So, you know, if, if you're a new IPX provider going out there meeting a, a potential customer, it didn't seem to be important whether you had a relationship with them or not. So, how are people um, approaching this? How are providers approaching this new marketplace? I, I think there's a number of different models that are, are being deployed. I think some companies have started right from the start to build and create a global multi-service IPX. You know, I need to be careful about naming names, but Tata, Bix, Telia, Sonera, I think, have, have set out down that track. Some people have said, well, I'm strong in my region. I'm going to provide all of the services in an IPX in my region, and that's what I'm going to do. Etisilat have announced an IPX, which is um, predominantly focused in the Middle East, where, where they're strong... Um, in services and, and transport. Some people have approached it from, uh, I'm going to start with a single service. I'm going to be global, I'm going to be strong in that service, probably voice, um, PCCW, I think, have, have taken that view and, and then extend into um, other services after that. There are the companies that were always strong in the global signaling, roaming solutions using the C7 networks, uh, Cineverse, SAP, Ascent. So they're approaching it from, I, I've already got this network in place, all I need to do is add voice to it and, and I'll have a, you know, a, a substantial um, global IPX. So there's that approach. And I think there's a little sign that you know, some people are approaching a single service in a regional basis. I think what CITIC, I, I believe, is trying to do is, is probably doing that. So I think there are many ways to start. You don't have to start you know, in the same way. There isn't one, uh, one size fits all uh, to how you create an IPX and start to deliver these services. So what are the benefits? I think from the customers, it obviously meets a big need. They need, in order to get this LTE roaming and voice over LTE working and HD voice working in a roaming environment, they need an IPX, and maybe that should be the, the first and biggest benefit. But coming beyond that, we've got the fewer but larger commercial arrangements, simpler network environment, guaranteed quality, um, and hopefully new service opportunities coming along. From the provider's point of view, I think an opportunity for long-term stable relationships. I think if you've purchased or are leasing high capacity from a customer to uh, your network, there's a, you know, a lot of uh, cost involved in that. You're not going to switch it off and change to someone else at the drop of a hat. Potentially less competition on price and, and more on reach, quality, uh, services and so on. And potentially less competition in general as consolidation likely takes place over the next few years. 
So will it happen now? Is it you know, really starting to happen? I think the fact we've got so many people in the room indicates that um, you know, things are a lot different than, than probably, probably they were last year or the year before. And yes, I, I believe it will. I think this time it really will happen. So thank you very much.